Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about the K Attractor. So before we get started, go ahead and install Synthesize Toolkit by browsing to Manage, Dynamo, then go for Packages, search for a package. You can type down my name or you can type down synthesize both works click on install latest version ok after it's installed you'll need to browse to it with dynamo player launch dynamo player by default you'll get something like this now click on browse to folder and go to your users file in C users get your username app data roaming dynamo dynamo rivet 1.3 packages synthesize and extra click OK you will see this following set of tools please note in order to use the tools I've provided in the synthesized toolkit you will have to be using the latest version of Revit which is currently 2018 and it should be updated to the 2018.2 which is currently the latest released update now, before we continue, I'll let you know some additional information. In the extra folder of the Synthesize Toolkit, which was the folder we browsed using Dynamo Player, which is currently the path of C users, my username, app data, roaming, Dynamo, Dynamo, Revit 1.3, packages, Synthesize Toolkit, and extra, you will see a set of families called K Attractor Adaptive Sample, K Attractor Pattern Peak Planar, a K attractor pattern solid sample, K attractor pattern void normalized sample, and K attractor pattern void segment sample. We'll be using some of those samples during our video, so if you required any of those to work with, you can always browse to the extra folder and grab them. So, open a new conceptual mass, change the units. Next, I'll go ahead and browse to the extra folder and I'll load the K Attractor Adaptive Sample and the K Attractor Pattern Solid Sample and the K Attractor Pattern Void Normalized Sample. Let me open K Attractive Adaptive Sample. Quick explanation of this is actually it's a very basic geometry with ability to self scale using parameters and rotate using parameters on the points. Now I'll load this into the project and I'll open K Attractor Pattern Solid Sample and before I continue I'll let you have a quick note here. Just note that I have made the horizontal spacing and the vertical spacing really something small. I'll explain the reasons of this in the end of the video so just remember this. The horizontal spacing and the vertical spacing are really, really small values. It doesn't affect the pattern itself, however. And, and of course, you don't need to use those patterns. Of course, you can create your own. Those are just samples. Load it back into the project. Now, another one, which is the void normalized, and load it again. So I have loaded all of those families. I can easily close them. Of course, I should have used or I could have used load and close, but it doesn't matter. So, now I'm going to create some forms and apply the pattern components I have provided in the sample, and I'll also repeat the adaptive sample on a divided path in order to let you understand how key attractor works. So, a simple curve and another simple curve and maybe an SP line 
I create the form of this and create the form of this. Maybe in this case, I'll add some um, curved curvature form. So maybe this. Now add a profile. Maybe I'll mirror this profile and perhaps I'll increase its height so it doesn't matter actually the shape of the form the workflow works with anything so let me start by dividing the surfaces so I'm going to use on those or I'm going to use the adaptive and the pattern components on all of these and let me start by this this I'll let it have the K attractor pattern solid sample which is plane of solids and this would have the K attractor pattern void normalite sample it's just openings inside the panels let's just give it a couple of seconds to apply Now, um, I might increase the number a little bit, just let it have 17, give it a little more time. Okay, very cool. And maybe this one, well, let it have actually the normalized sample too, it doesn't actually matter. However, in this one, I might actually rotate them like 45 degree. Mm, okay, however, I'd like a little bit of an increase of the numbers. For example, let it have uh, 20 by 20. This is good. Okay. So, the main concept of the K attractor is to use attractors. In this case, let me test it with this curved wall. There's going to be a force in here, and a force in here, and a force here, and here. So, you may actually change the forces the way you want. For example, this. And like this. The force can be anything, the sun, any kind of geometry, it just can be anything. So go ahead to manage Dynamo Player. Now scroll down to parameter K attractor, and you're gonna see that there are multiple nodes here. Some of them called bounding box method, element location method. So based on element name, it's actually an Rivet element. It can be understood as a type name. By family and type, by the family and type. So those are different selection method. And based on a selection, this is used most with system families. So we'll use this later time in the video. For now, I'm going to choose between elements name and family and type. Both actually works. However, what to, cho what to choose, bounding box or the element location method. So bounding box actually works and element location act actually work works. They both work correctly. However, element location is more precise. Bounding box is actually changeable. So actually it can be less precise. And least in this case, I'm going to go for element location method. Of course, you can use bounding box. Oh, it's almost the same result. So let me go for the parameter K attractor element location method based on our based on elements name or by family and type, it's actually the same. So edit the inputs, and the first option would be to select the attractor points. I'm going to isolate these points and I'm going to select them. So the next one would be the family name and the type name. 
As this is a single one with key attractor pattern solid sample with no types, or actually in this case, the type is the same as the family name. The the name. So I'll copy it and I'll paste it here and I'll paste it here. Now the next option is all elements of the family. It means all the types. So it ha if it has multiple types and you want them to be all included, you should St uh, let this true but if you want only this a specific type you should turn this off we're gonna see an example of this to be more precise and in, in, the, in the later time of this video so the name of the parameter to randomize I made you an option to randomize four parameters you can of course edit script and add whatever you want the parameter I'm going to modify here is called thickness now, a thickness parameter here is applied on this family by instance. So each one can has its own thickness. So, of course, zero thickness doesn't work here. And it actually can any can be any thickness except zero. So the parameter is thickness. Of course, if you don't have any other, just ignore the others here. Now, start number. So the main idea, I'm going to start with a thickness and I'm going to sequence that number. For example, if I start with the one, so this one, this part, this element has a thickness of one. And if I sequenced it for zero, one, that means the next one would be 1.1 and the other would be something larger, 1.2. Till all the elements are done, it's actually according to the number of the elements. So if I click play, I can actually check the number of the elements, which is reported here. It's 100 elements. So the numbers generated are 1.1, 1, 1 1.2, 1 and 100 times till it finishes. So let's continue reverse number we'll see how it does in a couple of seconds repeated sequence for all parameters this is gonna be an example for another video hopefully normalize and we'll going to the watch this uh, in this video and the later on or in the next example so if I'm done here's a quick note and I'll actually talk about this in a later time in this video too so after everything is set up, I'll go for play as I have done, just to know those are the stuff I'm going to select or the elements are going to be selected and the numbers that are generated and the number of elements. So you can drop and close that by this way. So whenever you're done, just click on proceed and play. Now you can see the result, uh, how awesome is this? Actually this point is like pushing the form here and this point is pushing it from that area and this is pushing it from here and this pushing it from there. So uh, if I want it to be less numbers, if I want to use less numbers, so it actually went to, to, the, to the maximum one is actually, um, let's say 10.9 and it's actually listed here, 10.9. Nine. If you want a less number, you just have to decrease the sequence steps. For example, if I want it 0, 5, and without proceed, you can actually report the, the stuff, the results. So you can see that those are the numbers. The maximum one will be 5.95. So if you want to see that, just click on proceed and play again, and they'll decrease the maximum height or the maximum thickness in this case. So this is how it works. And if you want, you can actually go for normalize and give it a minimum and a maximum. For example, I want the minimum number to be one and the maximum number to, to be 15. Without proceeding, I'm going to click on play and I'm going to check them. So the one, the minimum one is one and the maximum one is 15. This is another method of application. And of course there are rounding here. Maybe you can actually make it zero one rounding, check out the numbers, how they are and play again to check how you changed the rounding. Now they are something like this. They are something more precise, for example, more buildable. So you can actually click on proceed to check how it proceeds itself. 
So the maximum one in this case is 15 as I have normalized that. So this is how it works. In reverse, actually, instead of pushing them, it will pull them. So it's very, very cool way in dealing with patterns. Let me just apply it on another example without the uh, without reversing and click play again. And let me see that I want to apply it in this case, in this one. So this pattern uh, has an option of normalize, of norm, called norm. And 0, 05 actually closes it, and 0 actually doesn't work with it. Or exam for example, sorry, it deletes it in 0. So I don't want to delete it, and I, w I don't want to like be beyond 0, 05 because 0, 06 will reopen it again. So my limit will be 0, 1, for example, and 0, 05 as a maximum limit. Let's see, let's take the name of it, and let me, before I get started or I continue it, just create another attractor point. I want this to be here, and here, and another one here. For example, let's just open it like this, and like this. So three attractors here. Of course, uh, just a latest note here. Of course, if you deleted some of those attractors here, in the previous example, I mean, if you deleted like that, like this point and this point, they'll be removed from the selection here of the attractor points. And when you play it, they will. It will not see it. So actually, let me just. Let you know how it works, and now uh, two points worked, two points worked, and this one pushed the form from its side, and this one pushed the form from its side. So let me just change the attractors this time, and I want those to be my new attractors, select. Now choose the family name as its single type, and no duplication happened then the family name is as the type name here this actually doesn't matter because I only use one type and the parameter called norm if you have only norm you don't have to put this here if you have multiple ones you can actually randomize them all together so start number and previous or sequence let's say the sequence uh, actually here it doesn't matter it doesn't matter whatever you insert it here because I'm going to activate normalize and giving it a new minimum and maximum so a new minimum here is going to be 0 1 and the new maximum is going to be 0 5 before proceeding I want to see um, let me click on play and let me see so those are the elements and those are the values generated so the rounding here is pretty rough it's actually many of them are look alike and it actually makes sense sometimes but in this case i want to add a zero here and i'm going to play again and i'm going to see that there are multiple variations this time maybe i want a little more variations of course you can add as much as you want for roundings and play let me see that again so this is very this variation is pretty nice uh, of course it sometimes might be unbuildable so you want to make something buildable so it depends on your preference so let's go for play and I forgot to activate proceed. Another play. So it's done, and actually it's worked, kind of worked, however, it affected those which are on the far side, 
and actually some of the values got spread on that part which is not good and I made a mistake here on purpose which is actually I didn't duplicate the type of this so it doesn't affect another parts of the project so let us control Z here and before continuing I'll actually edit the type and duplicate it so this is something like let's say on the SP line or maybe part one or part a it doesn't matter actually and click OK and run this again but giving it a specific type name and removing all elements Now you can check how awesome it is this. So actually this one is the nearest one to the form. It actually has the largest openings and this one the second nearest and this one is the least nearest. So if you changed anything it can be really really updatable. For example let me just put this a little bit down and perhaps delete this at all. And I'll play again and you'll see a different result happens. As you can see, now it opens in this area and in this area and closes all, all other areas. Of course, you can reverse numbers and click play again. So it'll close on this point and on that point and it'll, it'll open in the middle of the form. So this is main concept, of course, a quick application of another one could be in this, this, create a form and let's divide the surface and let's go and give it normalized sample and I'll duplicate this to, for example, part B and now again giving it, like let's say just 17 here and giving it into this one as part B and the attractor points in this case are going to be this and this and maybe another one here so uh, this is going to be a different different form it'll give me and let's say without reversing normalizing and as is just go and run You'll just have to make sure everything is going all right here. And voila, here it is. So it depended on the points uh, itself. So if I deleted this point and played again, you will see a different behavior in the action. Of course, if you made this point uh further and it'll have also different effects on the form so it's very very awesome way to design and apply forces patterns sculptures uh, facades whatever and let's try it on the latest example here so i believe the idea is already clear enough this maybe just like this so let me before get started giving it another tab part C okay part C I'll turn this off if I turn this on it'll actually use all the types which is gonna ruin my work so I'm going to set this to false now norm as is and start number sequence and this is gonna be for another video as I said before normalize 0105 proceed rounding everything seems cool of course if you want to make sure before proceeding just turn this off and click on play of course I'll just wait for it to regenerate it's regenerating because of the type of the change of the name play 
and I'll see the number of elements, the number of values, and it's 164 elements. So I'm going to click on proceed and play it. So you can see that there has been a mistake here and it didn't act as I expected. Well, basically I forgot to set the attractors to those points. So setting them to those points and play again. You'll need to be careful with this or actually just to be staying focused. Now, this is cool. It opens here, and here, and here, and closes above. Maybe if I made this go up here, and play, it'll open up. Cool. So maybe you can actually delete this and open this, or making it up, and play again. And in this way you can explore the design possibilities. On the facades, on the opening, you can actually leave one opening as the sun. And you're free to do whatever you want, it's just like unlimited possibilities. So here you go, and of course you can use this, as I told you, for any kind of families, any form you create, it depends on your knowledge and your ability to create adaptive and pattern components. So let's say I want this time to apply it on an adaptive, actually, component. I'm going to draw something like this. Maybe actually dividing the path, giving it like 80. Now I'm going to go for the K attractor adaptive sample. And I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to edit the type, maybe add a little bit of a thickness. Just more thickness. Okay, that's cool. So, um, actually, I will remove the repeater, so I can actually modify its parameters by instance. Now, the size, or the scale, is now 7. Let me test some sizes. Well, actually, 15 seems a little bit good. Large a little bit. 14 is good. Maybe it's actually... Well, 15 is nice, actually. So I want to make the minimum one as 7 and the maximum one as 14. So let's go point, point, and point as the previous examples. But in this example, it will actually make this path be large here and large in here and large in here let's say i want the family name is called k attractor adaptive this time uh, it doesn't matter if you turn this on or off in this case because it's only one type so the parameter is called scale of course remember you the parameter needs to be instance and i'll start with uh, actually it doesn't matter with which one I start because I'll normalize and I'll give it a minimum and a maximum. So just something very quick here. Start and a sequence doesn't allow you to have minimum and a maximum. It actually just allows you to have minimum and it starts sequencing it. But normalizing will actually let you have a minimum and a maximum. So I'll start with a minimum eight, uh, seven, sorry, and a maximum 14 or 15 actually doesn't matter very much here. And repeat it as I said, it will be explain, explained sometime later, in maybe a later video, because it's fairly complex. So, proceeding, before proceeding, I'll cancel it, and I'll play, and I'll check what happens before. So, these are the elements, those are the values generated. Well, the values are not very cool, 
I'm going to round it less. They are better, but still I don't like them. I'm going to round it even less. Now those are good values to be generated and to be buildable. Uh, proceed and play. Now the path actually gets squeezed in those areas. And of course you can reverse the effect by reverse numbers and play. Now it will be enlarged on those areas. So this is pretty pretty awesome. Of course you can um, add more of a maximum so it can be larger. Now the next parameter let it be rotation and this time I'll replace the scale with rotation. Uh, I didn't make the scale and rotation at the same time because each of them will need different numbers. I'm going to start with 0 and I'm going to sequence it with 5 degrees, so each step is 5 degrees. I don't care about the maximum in this case, I just want it to be uh, sequenced. And I'm going to turn off normalize. And for this case, I'm going to move this attractor here, and I'm going to select only this attractor. I don't want this to be in, a, in action in this case. I want it to start from here. And let me say before proceeding, turning it off and play to see the numbers. So those are my angles. They are pretty cool angles. And I'll proceed and play. So this is the path which is rotated along the curve and of course it depends on the type of the family I provided you with the possibility to turn the six sides off and turn the square on so it actually turns into squares both actually have good effects so it depends on your need and in your uh, abilities to create adaptive and pattern components of course I have provided you with with void you can check that off so it gives you a full path not avoided path from the base but I presume that this is gonna be on ground and someone is gonna walk in so this is hopefully useful for you and you can of course take a camera and check how that works so uh, it's actually pretty awesome pretty awesome effect I created here with just a matter of clicks and a family of adaptive family and the dynamo player and of course it's fully fully customizable whenever whatever you'd like what parameter you'd like whatever form you want whatever values you'd like it's just infinite possibilities can be applied here um, hopefully this video is useful and it'll be like a huge step forward for generative and conceptual computational designing possibilities with Revit. Uh, maybe it's now easier with this K-Attractor to do all these stuff without needing of advanced formulas because uh, previously we could have used that we we could have done something like this but actually it's not it wasn't possible like this to be rotated as a pattern it actually needed to be uh, surfaced on the nodes and repeated as an adaptive with a reporting parameter and it was a really really headache and actually it does it didn't work as those uh, elements and the uh, pattern elements so it's actually very very cool procedure to do the logic behind this actually stands with the numbers it's all about numbers so uh, if I want to apply this example on a project I'm going to open a project architectural template now let me show you something really really uh, fairly easy to understand uh, go ahead and create a new furniture for example furniture and box just a simple 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 box and go for the extrusion end at a height parameter of course it's, it should be instance load it back into the project now let's say like I want to array those maybe adding this a little bit like this I sorry I want to array those 
Now, the logic actually stands in the attraction. So it's actually height, it's actually an instance parameter. So adding a disk as an attractor and giving it like select the attractor, it's in this case it's the disk. And the family is called family four. And the parameter is called height. So it's already written here. I'll leave it as is. And I want to start with 0, 1, or 1. And a sequence by 0, 20, or 0, 5. And I will not normalize. Without proceeding, I'll click on play to check the elements and to check the numbers that will be generated. 1, 1.5, 2, 2.53, till 10.5. It actually counts the elements and uh, give it the same sequence here. So proceed and play. And as you can see, of course, this is reversed, as I believe. Reverse it back. So the nearest one is this, and this takes the lowest number, then this, then this, then this, and so on. So it gives all the numbers, it actually gives it gives the elements that sequence according to the distances. Of course, you can add multiple attractors, and this is going to be complex matrix here. So the nearest to the attractors gets the numbers first, and the furthest gets the numbers last. So it's actually infinity, infinite possibilities you can use with this workflow. And as you can see, I could, I could use it in the project environment itself, which is very, very powerful. With any kind of families, any kind of windows, doors, facades, skylights, anything, lights itself. It can be anything. It can be used with anything. So... Uh, just the latest note before I end this video, why, why uh, is, for example, this one uh, has the horizontal spacing and the vertical spacing like this? Well, actually, there is kind of a problem in Dynamo. Uh, which actually doesn't allow Revit to locate the center of the form because the workflow is based on distancing from the attractors. So if it was something like this large, for example, or like something not very large, actually, if it was something large, like this 4x4, it will not detect the center of the form precisely. So if that's the case, I made it really small. It will not affect the pattern if you are a good Revit user, it will not affect the pattern because it's all adaptive and all customizable and all parametric. You can actually investigate the samples I have provided. You may learn from them a little bit and hopefully this video was great and the story was useful and uh, please use this tool uh, with caution. Uh, actually just concentrate while inserting the values and of course there are sub values sub uh, nodes to use for example uh, parameter randomize uh, some some basic stuff like randomizing the parameters for example if I don't want attractors if I want to randomize I can actually easily randomize the same concept applies for the selection uh, the same concept applies for the name of the parameters. For example, in this case, what was the name of this? It was thickness. I'm going to thickness. And in this case, the randomizing needs minimum and a maximum. Minimum value for 1 and a maximum value for 12 or 6, for example. Uh, integer numbers for randomizing without proceeding. Let me play and check this. It'll give me numbers like this, integers only. And if I made uh, without the integers and I played, and you can see that it gives me something like this. So I want to proceed and integers and the play. So it gave me something very, very random like this. Cool, cool effect. Each play will actually give me something new, something has new effects.
So it's actually nice, uh, actually, yeah, the, this can be applied on anything, not only this, the openings, the blah blah blah, the, everything can be actually applied with this. And another sub one called the sequence, so this is something else, maybe for another video. Um, so hopefully this is useful, and see ya!